I'm actually a bad programmer. I didn't start coding until college, community college. I didn't code an app when I was five and start doing competitive programming at 12. And that's fine because there's way more to software engineering than just coding or programming. There are so many skills that are even more important to your success as a software engineer. If you're watching and you had or are having crazy imposter syndrome because it took you hours to get through Leak Code Easy, or you had to go to office hours to get help with homework assignments, that's fine because I went through the same thing. You can be a successful software engineer too. Let me walk you through what took me three years to learn while working at both Uber and Amazon. When I got my first software engineering internship at Uber, I made a few mistakes that I've kept as a secret. I borrowed one of those jump scooters from Uber HQ and had an engineer help me reprogram it so that I could have free rides around San Francisco for that summer. I returned the scooter so Uber please don't come after me. My actual secret mistake is that after getting lucky in some coding interviews, I thought I was good at programming and didn't need to try hard at my internship. I was definitely interested in my work and put in the effort, but I didn't do the other kinds of work that were actually required to succeed at my internship. The project I was given was a vague problem that required critical thinking and design, but I wasn't a thinker, I was just a coder. The reality is that code is just one medium of problem solving. As a software engineer, you are a problem solver, not a coder. Let me give you an example. At Amazon, you come in as an L4 engineer, where you mostly just code up solutions that other, more senior engineers give you. In order for me to grow to an L5 or even an L6 engineer, I would need to start designing these solutions myself. I would get a vague problem like, we need to create an API that queries this new service. Instead of just hacking together a solution, I would go and write a design doc that would display the trade-offs of different design strategies, and then my team and I would review it for feedback. After that, I would go and implement it or delegate the task to another engineer on the team. It turned out writing is actually one of the most important skills you can have as a senior software engineer. If you can clearly and concisely write up a solution to a vague problem, that is infinitely more valuable to a company than just being a good programmer. Coding small features is actually the easy part in comparison to wrangling your mind around 10 different microservices and how to link them together to get the business functionality you want. After this realization, I also realized that my current writing style was utter trash. I would use fancy words and acronyms in my design docs to sound smart, and so no one would understand what I was saying. I went back and rewrote those design docs to be more clear and concise, as if I was explaining things to a three-year-old. I would create system diagrams so that my team would get a visual understanding of what I was saying in my design docs, and I would clearly enumerate all of the pros and cons of different design decisions. If you're still a junior engineer and you're not at the point where you are writing design docs, then write documentation. Write better documentation for your team's systems. If you do this, your team will love you for it. So practice writing well. The better you can write technically and non-technically, the more you can own projects, drive change, and get promoted to a more senior role. Another thing I learned was the power of reading code. When I started at Amazon, whenever I had a question about something in the code base, I would just ask a senior engineer, what does the code do when I do this? What happens if I pass this input to this service? And so on. This was a very bad habit that stuck with me for way too long. I think it's okay to do this if you're just starting out or if you're completely stuck, but whenever I would ask a teammate for help, they would just send me a code link that I could have gotten to myself. Learning to read code is a skill in its own because to write those design docs that I mentioned before, you need to have a crystal clear understanding of what existed before, before you build new things on top. So practice reading and understanding the code yourself. When you go into a meeting with engineers you've never met before, level and title are not a part of the meeting invitation. However, as the meeting goes on, you're able to clearly see who are the senior engineers because of the way they carry themselves and the way they talk about things. One of the universal traits of a senior engineer is the rejection of hyperbolic discounting. Hyperbolic discounting is a fancy term for preferring immediate benefits rather than future benefits. Even if the future benefit is large, people naturally discount future returns because there are huge pressures to delivering soon and realizing gains in the immediate is usually a team's default strategy. Here's a mind hack that you can use if you want to accelerate your promotion to a senior role by not discounting the future. Pretend that your team is literally your own startup. When you're in the typical mindset of a normal engineer, you just want to do your work and check out as soon as possible. If your mindset is more in line with your team's success, like if it's literally your own company, then you're going to see opportunities that you never saw before. 
For example, you may get a ticket to work on a code change, but because of your mindset, you realize that implementing the code in this way would hinder your team in six months down the line. Living in the future does take time. You have to think about it a lot. Your ideas can't be half-baked. If you make a decision to re-architect your systems, your team is going to expect a payoff. If there is none or things are worse, then you'll probably be in a little bit of trouble. It will take time and energy to think like this, but it's one of the best ways to accelerate your growth. As usual, everything is a trade-off. Lesson four, for fast growth, hack your mind to care about the future. In my time coding, I've met people who just seem like naturally gifted programmers. Coding gods. The secret is that most of them aren't just naturally gifted. They just write more code than me and you. They're contributing to open source repos, reading algorithms books, and building awesome side projects that solve their own problems. There's nothing stopping you from doing the exact same thing. Are you failing to do leak code easies? I was, and I would go to the library on the weekends and just practice. Are you struggling to understand SQL or databases? Pick up a reading resource on SQL. Or better yet, build a tiny side project that uses a database. The more hours you put in, the better you are going to get. It's never going to be more complicated than that. So don't overthink it and just write more code. So you're now an amazing writer. You read and understand your code base, which means you can answer your own questions. You account for tech debt and decisions, and you're even practicing writing code. You are well on your way, but if you're a software engineer, then that means you are going to make mistakes. If you're anything like me, then you're double screwed because I've made so many mistakes. Not even a few months ago, I made a code change that got to production that caused the Amazon site to go down for th this cost the company a solid loss in revenue. It's natural to want to hide from such an event, but that's definitely what you should never do. Instead, shout out your mistakes for everyone to hear. Let everyone know what happened, why it happened, and how it can be prevented in the future. Your company will respect you for owning up to your mistakes and not hiding. These mistakes happen. At Amazon, we have these documents called COEs, or correction of error documents for when large-scale failures happen like the one I caused. Names are never included on the COE because it's not about blaming someone or some team. One of the COEs I wrote was among the reasons that I got promoted recently. If you cause something to go down and people are going crazy about it, then that probably means that you're working on important stuff. Now, I'm not saying to go and cause production failures so that you can write cool documents about it. Please don't do that. The lesson is to own up to your mistakes. And lastly, remember that growing as a software engineer doesn't mean you need to sacrifice all your time from friends and family to doing projects and doing leak code all day. Time management is a very hard thing to do. I'm still learning it myself, but I know for a fact that if you can manage your time wisely and block distractions, then you can still grow as a software engineer and at the same time do other things that you're interested in. For me, it's been this YouTube channel and I've been having a lot of fun with this journey. Hopefully my story has inspired you to grow in your own software engineering career. You definitely don't have to be a coding prodigy or a 10x engineer. If you find the balance of growing both technically as well as non-technically, I'm sure that you will find a huge amount of success in your own journey. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and sub to see even more videos like this. Let me know what kinds of other videos you'd like to see down in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one.